Hello everyone, amateur meteorologist first in weather here. It is December 2nd, 2020, and uh, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, we are in the first two days of meteorological winter, and it has certainly felt uh, like winter for areas east of the Mississippi, conditions seasonably average, and you had a very deep and uh, impactful freeze for uh, the deep south. Uh, the panhandle of Florida went well below freezing into the upper 20s, and there was a deep frost and freeze in many locations, and uh, northern Mississippi and uh, Alabama and Georgia even got into some snow uh, as a big low-pressure system cranked off the east coast, and that cold air really descended down deep into the southern United States. Uh, and so many areas actually saw a dusting to an inch of snow in the deep south, uh, of course, earlier than cities like New York City, D.C., Richmond, and Philly. So it just goes to show that nature uh, is always going to throw some weird things out uh, at you guys. Um, but in the uh, looking ahead into the long term, things definitely are looking quite active. So let's get right to it. First, I'm going to show you the NAM 12-kilometer model. The, the video today will be focused mostly on the, the long range, but I do want to get to one quick thing. The system for December 5th. So there is some key discrepancies with the GFS and European model, and the NAM I think, provides a good middle ground. So the NAM model does, in fact, show the polar and jet, the polar and subtropical tropical jet uh, phasing, and that allows the system to get stronger, allows more colder air to be sucked in, and that allows for some more significant snow in uh, the interior portions of the Northeast. The European is on, a, is on one extreme, uh, showing very, very heavy snows for even areas just west of I-95, while the GFS shows almost no snow and has it as a pure rain event because it shows no phasing between the northern and southern branch. So the NAM, I think, is a good consensus, but uh, the system is only three days away and there's a lot of model uncertainty. Uh, so definitely going to be interesting to see what in, uh, what in fact happens. And uh, I think most likely it will be a solution somewhere in the middle of the two. Uh, in, and if not... A uh, bit leaning towards the GFS. Now here is the 500 geopotential height anomalies uh, from the uh, European Ensemble EPS and the GFS Ensemble, the GEFS. And I want to just go through this to show you what the models are thinking in terms of the long-range pattern. So let's move out right here. You can see at um, in at the current time we have a very strong positive PNA. We have a negative EPO, and we have some blocking right here just south of Greenland. So a negative. NAO. And you can see that we do have a very active subtropical jet right here. I'm going to get the laser out for you guys. Um, nope, never mind. Uh, but you can see we have another system right here. And then as we go through time, uh, this is the GFS ensemble. This is the European ensemble. And this is valid for, for, the, uh, for December 4th. And you can see that the European uh, model, the ECM, ECMWF, which shows those systems phasing and creating a huge snowstorm. In contrast, the European Ensemble, or rather the European Ensemble actually shows the same thing. So it also shows a bigger system for the Northeast, while the GFS Ensemble shows something a bit further to the north, to, to the south, and a less vigorous system. Uh, one thing to note, though, is the European model has been notoriously over-aggressive in these systems over the past two weeks, so it's definitely going to be interesting to note what happens. But now moving to December 6th, again, still a very strong positive PNA and troughing over the southeast and uh, northeast. And you can see we have a distinct area of um, an active subtropical jet troughing like this uh, and a split flow right here in the west. And then after that, that trough only deepens. Look at this. Both the ensembles have deep troughing over the eastern part of the country and warm conditions in the west, but you can start to see that positive PNA does start to break down just slightly. Uh, that ridge, instead of being very vertical, starts to flatten out just a bit. Uh, and same thing with the GFS right here and the GFS and Samba, but both have troughing over the eastern part of the country and in the western Atlantic, which would mean cooler conditions um, in the eastern part of the country and also the deep south. And then as we go further in time, uh, you can see the GFS ensemble is a bit further to the east with that ridge, while the European is a bit further to the west. But mostly, for the most part, they do have the same idea. Now going to December 12th, you can see that the both models actually do show a return to ridging in the, in the east and troughing in the southwest. Uh, so this would mean a return of warmer conditions, milder weather for 
the I-95 corridor in Mid-Atlantic and Northeast for December 12th and around that time frame. But after that, look what the models do. They break down that ridge and have a, a big trough essentially form. And the GFS is actually more aggressive, and I think it actually might be a little more correct. But in general, both models move that ridge to the east, and they do start to show below average heights in the... Uh, northern portion of the country. Obviously, this is all averaged out and washed out because we're so far out, but these below average heights in the Great Lakes and uh, Midwest and even stretching down just a bit is a very positive sign for cold risks as we head into the middle of December. Originally, it was looking like we might just see a cold first couple of weeks, but now it is looking increasingly possible that we could see this cold weather and active uh, pattern uh, last potentially well into the first three, maybe even four weeks of the month if things go right. Now, of course, this could change. This is very far out. Uh, and of course, like, like uh, last winter, we saw that very stubborn model trend where they would show a very favorable pattern for the east. And then as, as we got closer and closer, it would continue to break down. But now one thing to note is by December 18th, look at the GFS Ensemble. It's showing a return to a classic La Nina pattern. The past three weeks has been very un La Nina-like, but at the end of this model run, it's showing troughing in the northwest and ridging along the, the uh, southern part of the country. And this is a very typical La Nina pattern. So dry and uh, warm in the southern third of the country and then wet and cold in the Pacific Northwest. Whether this is true or not remains to be seen, but it does uh, also make it not make it guaranteed that we're going to see cold weather lasting through the end of the month. Rather, it looks like the cold risk will be highest uh, to at least the first couple weeks of December. Now switching to the uh, Arctic Oscillation. This is the EPS uh, forecast for the AO. You can see that it actually shows it going quite negative and then staying negative or neutral well into the middle of the month before approaching positive or neutral uh, around December 17th. The PR, the, um, e the EPO is expected to rise into the positive value but then crash into the negative range and last into that uh, until at least the middle of the month. And then the uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, which is pretty negative right now, is expected to stay negative or neutral uh, till the end of um, this time frame, middle of December. And finally, the PNA, which is sharply positive right now, is expected to gradually decline as we head into December 10th. So I think while the PNA might will start to decline by the 10th, the other tele, uh, teleconnections might become more favorable as we go through the middle of the month. But one thing I do want to point out is all the models have a consensus. All the teleconnections in the European forecast are approaching neutral or are leaving the favorable stage once they reach the, uh, December 17th. And so that, that is an interesting trend because you saw the GFS ensemble showing warmth in the eastern part of the country uh, after December 16th, and the European teleconnections uh, forecast does sort of support that. So the warm risks after the middle of the month are there. So right now it's very uncertain what's going to be the pattern after December 15th. It could be warm and dry or it could be cold and stormy. So we don't know that just yet. It remains to be seen. However... I do want to point out that until then, the pattern does remain very favorable for cold and unsettled conditions in the eastern part of the country, particularly the interior northeast, uh, states like New York, uh, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, the uh, Midwest, so I'm talking states like Ohio, Indiana, uh, portions of Kentucky, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, those areas right now look favorable for seeing unsettled conditions and cooler than average conditions. The Deep South also does look to remain below average for the next two weeks, and that looks to be the main hotspot for below average anomalies, but the storm track as of now does not favor any uh, wintry precipitation risks for the Mid-Atlantic and South. That could change as we approach the middle of the month, because when you typically when you see these uh, favorable teleconnections approaching neutral, we do see an increased tendency for a snowstorm during that time frame. But again, that is more uh, uncertain at this point. But it does look like the deep south and eastern part of the country will remain active and a bit cooler than average, especially the further south you go, until the until at least the middle of the month. Now let's talk about wild cards. This is the GFS uh, 10 uh, 10 millibar 
uh, polar vortex forecast. And so you can. this basically gives us a good idea of what's going on in the extreme upper levels of the atmosphere. And as we go through time, and let me just play it for you guys, you can see that it shows a split of the vortex before it reconsolidates and then basically it gets completely disturbed and one chunk gets uh, shot right down into the lower part of the United States or the northern portion of Canada. Uh, and one thing I want to point out is if you switch to the European right here, uh, the European only goes out to our, the 240 hours, right? And so what you see happening is, let's wait for this to load. At hour 240, the European does show that polar vortex consolidating just a bit uh, after it was indicating a split right here. And I want you to keep in mind, this is exactly what the GFS was showing, a split in, around the 144-hour mark, uh, which would not really impact the United States because the split is not directed towards us. And then after that, the GFS and both the Europeans show a consolidation like this. It gets tight again. But after that, where the GFS goes further, it shows a weakening and a, almost a complete split of the polar vortex. And if the, what the GFS solution is saying verifies, that would mean very cold conditions for areas in the eastern part of the country. We're talking the Great Plains all the way to the east coast. But that's a big, big if. Some conditions right now are favorable to disrupt the vortex. But again, this is really just uh, guessing at this point. What does look certain is, is that the polar vortex is going to be tested from now until the end of the month. And it's gonna, it's gonna be crucial to how this winter turns out in the end based on what happens over the next two or three weeks with the polar vortex. Certainly, it does look like the cold risks for this winter, this was looking like a blowtorch of a winter, that has slightly decreased. And the risk of a cold winter or um, a more average winter for the East is slightly increasing. Again, this is speculation, so I'll keep you guys updated. But what happens with this polar vortex is crucial in, in determining the pattern after the middle and latter portions of December. Because if this is not disturbed, then we're going to go into a classic La Nina pattern for January, February, and March. If it is disturbed, I think January could also be an extension of the first half of December. So that is the main wild card. And so I'll keep you guys updated. I hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you next time.